Isle of Man TT2 is fast, like I mean seriously fast. I don't think I've played a racing game that almost takes your breath away when you hit the gas and makes your palms sweat quite as much when you're flat out. Returning in this follow up to the 2019 original on the Switch is a smart choice in sound design where as you reach top speed the sound of the wind whizzing past kicks in and it's just that simple addition that makes a world of difference when combined with the speed of the game's visuals to hammer home the feeling of the incredible death defined speeds these riders reach. At the hub of the game is a redefined career mode which eventually gives you a few different routes to qualify for the season finale race, the main event itself, the 60 km snowfall mountain course and the Isle of Man TT race. The career mode is impressively beefed out this year with 17 new tracks meaning you have access to many more minor races across different events in the UK and Ireland as you work to win the championship, earn enough signatures from teams or just hands down qualify for the TT race. The race calendar can look overwhelming with so many events thrown at you but carefully picking and choosing which ones to take part in each month lends itself to some nice strategy as you will need a competitive machine underneath you for different events. As before you can spend money on new bikes, upgraded parts and a new feature this year, perks. Winning races will earn you points for the championships, monetary rewards and depending on the conditions set out at the start of the event, new perks, which range from improvements in mechanical performance to increasing your payouts from events. The career layout is well thought out and easy to navigate and if you do want a break from the month to month activities you can also take part in optional challenge events for even more rewards. This is definitely the crown jewel of Isle of Man TT2 and in some ways even more so than the titular race itself and I can see myself spending many hours in the career mode. Now before we talk about gameplay I'll just round the modes off because as well as the career mode you can enter a single race including the full TT race tackle a time attack complete with leaderboards for each track or even take it online to race against others although over the years my experience has sadly taught me that online racing on the Switch outside of Mario Kart 8 is pretty dead so perhaps don't go into this one expecting the online lobbies to be packed but it is a nice option to have included which I applaud KT Racing for working on once again. Now once you hit the winding narrow roads on your bike things take a step up again from last year. Although personally I found some of the visuals a bit basic, with some basic looking models, oversaturated colours and blurry logos, once in motion everything looks fine. Pop up and shadow drawing is kept to a minimum but as we've come to expect in Switch racing games now, is still prevalent. Overall I prefer the trackside and skybox visuals on TT2 over TT1's slightly washed out look. Feel free to check out my comparison video to see more on this. As I mentioned in my opening this game is fast, I thought TT1 was fast but TT2 is verging on arcade territory and it took me a long while to adjust to the new physics. Turning is still overly snappy with the bikes feeling a little bit too lightweight and easy to manoeuvre. Again this problem existed in the original but I feel like it's slightly worse here. It's nothing you cannot get used to and having never ridden a superbike before perhaps I'm in the wrong so please let me know in the comments below. Once you do get used to the handling model, racing is definitely intense and enjoyable, but for me the narrow tracks and close proximity of trackside objects means it can be frustrating unless you're in a zen like state of concentration. For me, I prefer more traditional open racing tracks like those found in MotoGP, but again the additional challenge here will absolutely appeal to the sadists amongst you, especially those that play rally games for example. Many of the races are solitary time trials but in the ones that do feature straight up racing versus an AI, they behave well enough and there are multiple skill levels to try if you're struggling to keep up, which scale quite nicely. There are genuine thrills to be had here when racing side by side through the tiniest of chicanes and accelerating away from your rivals. Sound design is excellent with different sounds for the range of bikes, sickening crash noises and the aforementioned wind rushing past you is an absolute masterstroke. Overall, I'd say TT Isle of Man 2 is a very well made racing game. The career mode will keep you engaged and leaderboards for time trials will also keep you coming back. I challenge anyone to take the full TT race on with the assists off from the handlebar view and not feel an incredible sense of accomplishment to finish the race in one piece. There is enough here to justify the upgrade 
and for me, I'm going to be giving TT Isle of Man 2 on the Nintendo Switch an excellent 8 out of 10. Thank you very much for watching the review. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment below if you're going to be picking this one up. And also please subscribe if you're new here. Really appreciate that. But all that's left to say is thanks again for watching and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.